Hey everyone, it is Thursday, time to stamp, make some cute stuff, have a good time. Let me just find my video. So I am Tony Tesler, Tony Stamps, oop, here I am, that's me, um, and apparently I did not turn my volume down, okay, good, oh wow, everything looks straight, we are good. Okay, so Thursday, um, what's today? September 23rd, and uh, we're gonna do four fold cards today. Hey, Julie. Um, and it's like four different panels, um, but first I wanna go over some mail because I got some really cool stuff. Um, so Sharon LaCroix sent me this from, hey, Sean, hey, Molly. Um, Sharon sent me this from California and she had a little note in there that um, these might be good on like your journals or um, cards or something. You can put business cards or little things in here. So Sharon, you're going to have to tell me where you got this die um, because it's totally cute. It reminds me of like a library card kind of thing. It's I've seen these before. I just I can't remember the names of them, but all these you slide stuff in here. And it's cute, so you can add it, um, you know, to your journals, like we said, or or whatever, even on your cards. And look at that pumpkin one. And then she sent me a bunch of blanks, you know, different patterns and um, black and white that I can use. So I love it, Sharon. Thank you. This is really cool. Um, but I really need to know what is this die called because people are going to ask me, and um, I need to look up for it myself. So awesome. I love that. And then Sean, it's a good thing you're here. I have two cards from you. Sean sent me some happy mail just to make me smile. And it did. Oh, I can't get that back in the envelope. God. Okay. Um, so this card, this, I believe it's called the sunburst technique where you um, chop up a bunch of paper and put it at an angle. And she used this really, Hey Rose, she used this beautiful, um, I want to say Blackberry Beauty paper, which I believe is back ordered until sometime in uh, um, October, but I love it. So there's like cinnamon cider, gold, Blackberry Bliss, uh, I think polished pink. Really cool. I love it. So thanks, Sean. And then another card, this one, this was from you also. That's right. Which by the way, I loved how um, this one in. So you use the border basics, which I have not used. Maybe I've used mine like twice and I need to use them more. Um, but with this paper, I love it. And just cutting out the plants because I didn't get this set that matches this. So I just have the papers too. And I have, um, I will be, you know, I make stuff just by cutting them out and the gilded gems. Mm, one of my favorites. I love it. And then this one is from Rose and Rose always dolls up the inside of hers. Um, but I like that you put this embossed brick piece, you know, just to protect the, the gems, the rhinestones here, but I can still, then I can use this. So I really like that idea, Rose, besides all this, love it. These are those, um, gold holly leaves. Beautiful. Um, then I've got, this was the, I posted a card. Hey Peggy, I posted a card. Uh, I can't remember yesterday or the day before. Um, but I did a one-on-one -on -one slim line card exchange with somebody. And this is my partner sent me this one. Um, I had done fall leaves in, um, pink and bumblebee, like the magenta madness and bumblebee. And I really like it. Um, but this, uh, look at this dye that makes all these layers. And then there's like a lot of ink blending and then these leaves, everything on here is a dye. I love it. And this background, I don't know where she got any of this. Um, but just, this is a really good idea. Use what you have to make some sunflowers. And yeah, this slim line, people make their slim lines, different sizes. There's no real, you have to's, you know, this one is four by, I want to say nine and a quarter. Let me measure it this way. Yep, nine and a quarter. So it really just depends on what size envelopes you have. And you can always make your envelopes, which I do a lot. So I love that. Um, and then I got a birthday card from my friend Virginia. And um, this was some of our, 
I don't know what this leaf is from, um, this die cut, but this was from paper art gallery, floral art gallery. I have like a couple pieces left and I love it. So thanks you guys. I love, love, love it. And then the post office knows me. They sent me the new, like what's coming and, um, with the stamps and everything. So I do like to have a bunch on hand. So I think I will be getting some of these day of the dead just because they're really colorful and I like them. Um, Christmas, there's some cute otters. I may not get those cause I don't have any otter stamps, but what did I see in here? Um, I already have the lighthouses. Uh, yes, the birthday. So here's some cute message mo monsters. That'd be good if you're, you have kids or grandkids, they'd have fun with that. Um, but I'm going to get this new happy birthday one. Cause I like to have something for birthdays and I'm out. I had these and, um, so I need these. So I will be getting those. The post office always has good stuff that I like. All right, let's get going. So four panel cards. Um, I was going to do this a couple weeks ago with stamp, my stamp club. And I told around, I was looking, hunting for videos, going through a lot of them, trying to find measurements and directions that I liked. And I found one that was okay. Um, but most of them were using 12 by 12 paper and I didn't want that because not everybody has it. So I, two weeks ago I went through and I just changed up the measurements and redid it to, to make my own. So both cards that we're making tonight is, um, they use eight and a half by 11 for the card bases. So you don't have to have special, you know, you don't have to have 12 by 12 card stock. The designer paper, um, that's different. But here is a four panel card. So it folds out and it could sit up. I mean, this is really, I love it. So the backside, you could decorate the backside. Oops, what's that little? glue booger on there. Um, you could decorate this if you wanted, but I mean, it's thick enough already. So, um, some people also want to glue these together to make it more of a book so that it would open like this. Um, but I like how it can sit up like this and I mean, I just can't stand it. So I've dolled up the front. This is my prototype and, um, this is the one we're going to do first. This is a five by seven card and I'm going to change the colors up. Um, but just to show you what we've got here, this is a belly band. So you can tuck something in here. You can have a little tag or a little insert, um, you know, whatever you want. This is another tuck spot. So I only put glue like around here and here so that you can tuck something in here. So I like that there's like, um, journal aspects to this, you know, journaling or scrapbook. Cause you can, you know, tuck pictures, pages, cards, you know, anything. Um, or you could have just glued this down straight. That's up to you. Then on this one, I added a pocket and that's where I had this tag. And this tag is just a two by five piece of cardstock. And I did minimal stamping, um, you know, just so you could put the words, you know, right on it, whatever. Um, and then this part, this is really the only part I left for straight up writing. Um, now I should have left this piece open, but I didn't. Um, but I'm going to on the next one, but this could be another, uh, tuck spot, you know, that you would slide something in there. So I love this size and I just can't stand it. I love it. Cute, cute, cute. And five by seven. I'm really excited that we're only using eight and a half by 11 now to make it. So let's get into it. Um, we're going to do the same card, only different colors. So I'm going to use the, um, what's it? I can't think of the name right now. It's staring me right in the face. Oh wait, here we go. Saw succulent and pale papaya. Jeez. Shouldn't have been that hard to get that out. All right. So I'm going to put this away. So let's start with the base and I am going to write this out. So my blog, tonystamps.blogspot.com. That's where I'm going to make the blog post and have all the measurements. Um, Today, I'm only going to write down the base pieces because then you can make your layers however you want, but this will be enough to get you started. Okay. So let's do five by seven over here. So our base pieces, 
we need cardstock that is nine and a half by seven and then and then we'll score it score it at a half inch and four and a half and then we're gonna need and we'll say one piece of that and then we're gonna need one piece that is seven by six and a quarter and we're gonna score that at three all right and then this will all make sense all right so let me get my pieces so this is what I'm using um, I've got my pale papaya pieces and I haven't scored them so we're gonna work through all of that together all right you're gonna need a cutter and a scoring board and then you're gonna need either a blade to cut even again or you're gonna need this style of cutter where we can go in partially like my guillotine cutter is not gonna cut it for the other bits all right oops my scoring tool just caught caught up on something all right so let's do our first piece so this is nine and a half by seven so here nine and a half by seven so we want to score on the long side and I said we're gonna score it at a half an inch that was another thing that um, when I was doing all my research it seemed like most people did a quarter inch here and this is the flap that is going to attach the two pieces together and a quarter inch um, it just didn't give me the the good feels I like something more to grab onto all right so a half inch and four and a half but I'm gonna flip my paper over for the four and a half just because I like my score marks to go opposite so I'm gonna fold it this way and then our flap is gonna fold this way all right so that's our first piece second piece this is seven by six and a quarter and we're gonna score it again on the long side we're gonna score this at three all right now we need our cutter so in order to get the different heights we're gonna slice into this paper and then we're gonna slice into this one um, most of the measurements I saw called for a um, 5 8 inch and I guess it's just you know how you how different you want this to be I'm going with 3 quarters inch just because I like that number better than 5 8 so this is where cards folding our one base so I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna cut 3 quarters inch which depending on your cutter let me see where this goes three quarters inch okay that looks like that line for me but your cutter may be different so I'm gonna put my edge on the three quarters and I'm gonna cut from here down to this score mark at three quarters all right and then I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut the rest just cut this straight off now notice on this score mark there's you know to the left and to the right I'm gonna cut it on the left side just so I cut that score mark out entirely and I don't wanna there we go I didn't want to jack that up nice flat cut all right same thing on this one so this piece this is what's going to be um, it's gonna attach to this like right here so see here that's gonna go like that so again I want to cut three quarters inch off of this this is gonna be our front flap so open it turn it to the right and again push this up to the three quarter inch mark and then we're gonna cut right down to that score mark again and that is all the cutting that we're doing for now so let me snip this off again I'm going on the left side of this score mark and trying to get it nice and straight there we go trash trash and I need my bone folder so I'm just gonna flatten everything down 
and I am gluing this all together before I start laying down any of the pieces. All right, and then we'll fold this one. So I just took my bone folder and swiped down the top of that because that cutter that I have, um, it just seems like it raises the back edge of it up. Let me see, is it gonna show up on this one? Yep, can you tell how this, it looks like there's that lip is raised up, so just take your bone folder, flatten it right up. I mean, that's on the back, but still, I don't wanna look at it. All right, so now I'm gonna glue, bleh, put glue right on this tab, and I'm still using my, this Barely Art glue. And I'm applying this pretty liberally. All right, and then I'm gonna line these up. So I want this side to go on the flap here. And I'm moving this because I wanna be able to tap it when I get it in place. Tap it all on the table so it's all together, the same width, length, I may have to go back and do a little trimming, um, but nope, looks pretty good. Oops, sorry, I know that's moving around a lot. I want this right on the edge. And it looks like I didn't get it quite down at the bottom, but that's gonna be good enough. All right, let's move that over here. So see here where I've got a little bit poking out you know what, that is gonna bother me. I'm gonna have to trim that up. But it's good that I can get with my guillotine cutter, I can get just, you know, the teeniest little hair cut off of here. I'm gonna have to double this up though. All right, so I'm just scooching this. I mean, it is just hanging over the tiniest bit. All right, that's all even and nice now. Okay, so see that? I mean, that really, that makes a difference to me. That would, that would bother me. All right, so we've got our base. Looking amazing already. All right, now, um, these are for later. I'm using the In Color Jewels. Now, I did do all the stamping and the die cutting of the flowers. I hope I can find them, yeah. So let's start with the, let's start with the inside, the back piece. All right, so I've got a piece of white that is, now I'm gonna tell you these measurements, but I'm not gonna write them all down. I don't have room for that. Um, but I am gonna update, this, this will be on my blog probably by Saturday. All right, so we've got a piece of white that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. All right, and that's just gonna go right on there. Hey, Vicki. So I really like these cards. I mean, it's a card, it's a journal. Uh, it can be a lot of things. Um, you are gonna have to make your own envelope and you'll see that when we get to the regular size ones because they are so thick by the time we're adding all the stuff to it. Um, so you have to make your own, but everyone can do that. All right, then I've got a strip. That is the wrong strip. Oops. That is completely the wrong strip. Hmm. I wonder if I cut my, I was supposed to have a strip that was one and three quarters by six and three quarters. And this is not long enough. Yep, what was I thinking? Huh. All right. One and three quarters by six and three quarters. Nope, not there. Let me just paw through some stuff here. Hmm. All right, good thing I have this paper handy. So this is the hand pen paper. That's the celebration freebie that is going on only until, all right, so the stripes are gonna have to go this way. Um, so celebration ends next Thursday, the 30th. So, we are running out of time to get your free stuff. All right, one and three quarters. 
This does kind of bother me that the stripes are going that way um, because it's going that way on another one too. All right, one and three quarters and then six and three quarters. It's like I forgot what I was doing for a minute. All right, now this one, I am gonna make it a pocket. Let me get this out of the way. Um, or a tuck spot, I mean. So I'm only gonna put glue around the three edges. And I like that with this glue, you can get it pretty close. See how wobbly my hand is? Ugh. You can get it pretty close to the edge and it's not gonna like squish out. So let's get this in place and just hold that down for a minute. See, nothing, nothing leaks out, but if it does, you just like get at it with your finger. It's not a really, it doesn't leave a real sticky mess on your fingers. All right, let me make sure this tucks and it does. Awesome. I love it. All right, now, let me see. And I'm following the same setup as this. So now we're gonna do a designer paper and the embossed pocket. Okay, so from my pile, um, I think I was gonna use that one. And still just doing the color and black. Okay, oops, and here's our pocket. Now for this one, I used the macrame embossing folder. Um, on my prototype, I used the Parisian Flourish, which I love. I wish we had more like that. Actually, there is another flower embossing folder that I don't have yet. I forget the name of it, um, but it's one of those things where I keep like going back and forth. Do I want it? Do I not want it? And then I put an order in and forget about it. So I'm like, well, decision made for me again this time. All right, now I need, um, I keep a one inch punch up here um, and I mostly use it for like boxes when you need a little thumb hold and I'm just eyeballing it. But that comes in handy. All right, and again, I'm gonna glue just on the three sides so we can actually put stuff in our pocket. And I'm putting this right down at the bottom. Oops. I didn't get it quite right. There we go. And let's check. This glue sets really fast too. So, yep, perfect. I love it. All right, next page. On this one, I did a full sheet that was embossed again with the macrame folder and this this piece and this piece are the same size so this is three and three quarters by six I don't think I told you that before and the pocket was um, two and a half by three and three quarters okay so three and three quarters by six two and a half by three and three quarters all right let's put glue all down here now you could really doll these pages up however you wanted. Um, but I like all these pockets and tucks because you could have tickets to something in there. You could have um, pictures. You could have notes, you know, gift cards. So, um, you know, gift card will fit in that pocket, like lots of stuff. All right, now we're gonna get to, this is the front and we're decorating this piece also. And this is where I wanted, um, doot, doot, doot. Oh, I have this for the front. So this one I'm gonna put, hmm. Yeah, I want this black side showing because I'm gonna have white polka dots on the front and I want it to be like white, black, black, you know, white, I want it to alternate. All right, now this piece was two and three quarters by five and a quarter. All right, 
So two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Then remember, I've got my little belly band. So you could put your belly band here. You could put it up here. You could put it, I put it like right here so you could still tuck something in. Um, you could put it at the very bottom and again, punch a little moon out and make it another pocket if you want. Um, but before I put this on there, I want to do a little bit of stamping. So see here, I've got um, a little bit of these lines. That is from the Art in Bloom stamp set. So I'm going to use that tone on tone. So let's bring in the Pale Papaya ink. Oh, and you know what? Here's our tag. I might as well stamp that as well. And I just realized I need my tag topper. I'm just going to grab whichever one I can reach. So let me punch this first. This is a two by five piece of pale papaya. Oh. And then I'll have to grab some of my ribbons and trim bits. All right, so my belly band is gonna go like this. And what I did, I stamped it and I'm using the clear stamp and I'm eyeballing so I can see the bottom edge. So I stamped it once and then without re-inking, I just moved it over a little and stamped it again. I mean, you can barely tell that there's any difference. All right, I mean, like I pr could probably just do it all three. Like it doesn't really, it's not making as big a difference as I wanted. but I am going to alternate it because I don't want them to look like they're all the lines are the same. You know, that it was just rows. All right. So let me wipe this off. And then for our tag, I just did a couple of little circles. Just on the corners. So there, just a little something. And I need that. All right, let's wipe this down. Get this out of the way. All right, so belly band. Let's put this back. Mmm, I'm liking it. Now this looks uh, really dark right now, but that is going to lighten up. Don't worry about it. All right, so I'm just going to put glue just on the two sides because we want to be able to slide something in this. All right. And again, I'm going to put it like mm, down right here. Just hold that in place. Oops. Now this time I did get some glue coming out. Yeah. Rose tuck in a poem for the occasion. That would be nice. And how, how cool would this be? Um, like for a wedding, you know, like you could put little notes, different gift cards, um, thoughts, wedding advice, like it could be a picture. I like it. All right, we'll come back to the tag. So now let's do the front part. And here's all my flowers that I already stamped and die cut. Um, I do have to add color to some of these, but how are we doing on time? 8.25, eight, almost 8.30. Okay. All right. So this I've got um, I want a tone on tone layer and then the designer series paper. So this piece is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then the designer series paper is two and a half by five. So I've got quarter inch borders. Ooh, I like that too. Yikes. No, I'm going to stick with it. I want the polka dots. Jeez. Decisions, decisions. I had this all planned out and then flip one piece of paper over and I could change my mind that quick. All right. So that's that. Now I'm just gluing this on flat, but before I do that, I want to tuck, um, tie some ribbon around it. So this ribbon actually goes around this whole layer, but then I cover it up with a flower. I could just tie a bow and glue dot it on there. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see. Maybe I'll do that. Because what's the point if I'm going to like cover it up anyway? All right. 
This will work. Oh, you know what I can do? Um, a double. Let me use this. So I got this bow maker a long time ago. Um, you can find them online. I got it from Shiaki Haverstick. Her son made it. And, I mean, this is we're talking like probably 15 years ago. Um, let me see if I can remember. All right, so I'm gonna loop it around. I'm gonna go twice. And then I cross it, flip it over, and then tie this in a knot and I think I did it backwards because I should be able to tie this easier yep okay I want the tail on my left hand all right so I'm looping it around twice yep oh there we go over Tug it tight and then tie my knot. So I've got two loopies on here. I think I want that a little bit bigger though. Hmm. All right. I'm going to stick with it. Okay. Whatever bow tying mechanism you have, oops, sorry, I think it just knocked the camera, and then the light. I really do like this uh, sheer ribbon, I gotta say that. I'm a sucker for the ribbon. I seem to get it, and uh, whether I, I'm lucky if I use the whole roll of something. All right, I'm gonna stick this on here with a glue dot, actually with two of them. And I know I'm going to want this like right down here. Normally I would probably put this on at the end, um, but I'm going to use the same layout. So I know where it's going to go. All right. So this is going to go here and I might as well glue this flat. And then we'll start adding some flowers, but I do have to stamp the one. Um, all right, so let's go back to our prototype. You see this little bit of shimmer vellum peeking through? This was left over from when, hey, Teresa. Um, this was left over from when I did that set of cards with the, sh with the shimmer vellum. And I had embossed that with the brick folder. It just needed something behind it to break it up and big enough. Um, and I had punched a bunch of things out and they weren't, big enough and at that point I was tired of die cutting stuff so I found this it had dropped on the floor and I was like oh that's perfect so I grabbed up this one this one I had done with the Parisian flourish so all I did I ripped the edge towards me because I get like a teeny bit of the white edge um, and then I'm just eyeballing that I want it to go mm, about there so rip this and I am going to save this because I can do something else with that. All right. So this is going to go here and I'm just putting glue. I don't have to cover the whole thing and at an angle, but a flower, like see this flower that covers up most of it. Like I don't see any of the glue through there. All right. Let's leave that. Um, so I need this flower and this flower and I need to add color to these. So let's go ahead and stamp all these bits. So I've got my pale papaya ink and mm -mm -mm different these images I don't think these flower fill-ins they don't fit perfectly um, but they're good enough they're close enough for what I want and I mean that's what it's designed it's designed that way so all right I've got this big one oops I can see here this little bit needs to come out let's 
see it's close enough oop um, so that's that and then we get some little ones this is a two so let me turn it around the right way and then we use it here and I think that's it this little one maybe this way I'm not being too worried about it all right now the leaves is that all nope I need this little bit this guy mmm I do like this pale papaya I'm a fan of orange anyway all right now we're gonna go back with the soft succulent and do our leaves and I need to get all this out of the way so the leaves are just like two sizes small well small and smaller um, but I am using them I'm just turning the base around and sometimes not even going the right way but that's okay And then I'll take this teeny one, go in here. All right, now is the chance to show you, I need another block. So this stem right here, there is no, um, there's no stamp for that. So, and I do not have the markers. So what I can use is the blender pen. Um, now you can squeeze your ink pads so that you get ink in the lid here. I don't like doing that anymore. Um, I just take a block and get the corner, get some ink in the corner. Take your blender pen, make sure it's running clear. Grab some of that color and look, it acts just like a marker, all right? Now, if you wanted a lighter, like a wash color, you could do the same thing with um, your aqua painter. And I do that a lot. So, but this, I just wanted to show you if you want like a little controlled area. All right, let me wipe this off and put it back. Um, I think that is all of the stamping I'm gonna do for that. I do wanna add Wink of Stella to all of these, all my flowers. You could do it before or after, it doesn't matter. All right, and then this is just sticking these flowers on and we will be almost done with this card. I have wanted to try this four panel card for so long. Um, but I tell you, I was really discouraged with all the, you know, everything I found was, you know, you needed a piece that was like five and a half by 11 and a half. And I was like, come on, is that half inch really necessary? So it turns out it is not. So I just had to sit down and do some math and now I'm happier and I love it. Um, now mailing, this is very heavy because it's got all these layers. So it is probably gonna have to go as a package. You would have to, you know, wrap it nice so it doesn't get wrecked. Okay, now I started with our first one. Hey, Cindy, thank you. I started with this one and it's popped up and then I tucked in the other flowers, the other two around it. Mm, one more. Why not? You could also make this style card and keep most of it like for signing. If you needed, you know, a card that like 20 people had to sign, you could do it that way. All right, let's put this, I want that at an angle. And, you know, I'm gonna pop these other flowers up too. So on the prototype, I just glued them down flat. Um, mm -mm -mm. So I want it like that, like tucked under here. Yeah, you know what, let's do flat. Let's not get too crazy. 
And I like mixing and matching like the different stamp sets. So really paw through whatever you have and, um, and see what you can put together. I like it. Now I left greetings off of both of these. I did that on purpose because I don't really know what I'm going to use them for. But my plan is, especially on this one, have a little thing right across here, just like a little strip. Let me see, like um, something like this size, you know, here or across the whole thing, maybe even down here, probably up here, um, but just a little something. Um, Cause let's face it, this is pretty and I don't want anything to detract from it. <laughs> All right, let's flip the paper. And this one, I definitely did flat and I'm putting it right on that belly band. And then our, um, what do you call this? Arrangement or whatever. So I want this to still be a tuck spot. So I'm only gonna put glue right down here and right there. Right there and right there. All right. And you just want to be sure that it doesn't cross over this score line. You don't want anything to inf interfere with that shutting. All right, let's grab our tag just to make sure. Yep. So see, we can have our tuck spot there. We can tuck here. Here a tuck, there a tuck. And then here's where we're gonna actually add our tag. Um, oh, I need my ribbon. So what did I use? Um, the black, this black and white gingham is back ordered for a couple of weeks. Um, oh, I need white. I used white crinkle and some white baker's twine. Sorry, I thought I had. That I had those within reach. Um, so all I did was took, I eyeballed this. I took both of these together, droop, about like that. Cut them off. You could also use the white glittered ribbon, but that too is back ordered. Um, and then we're just gonna fish these through. Now I just realized I forgot to stamp the flower on, on this one, uh, but I'll just do that later. Or I might leave it off of this one. It gives it more room to write stuff. All right, so this, just pull them, tug them all down here. And then I'm gonna tie, I use my baker's twine and just tie a bow. Like catch these all up together get this even it's a white baker's twine if you had um, some of the white baker's twine that has sparkles in it I have some of that I think from a paper pumpkin or something I have just a little bit of that left you could even run your a glue pen across some of this and add real glitter why not all right I like to tie it and knot first And then I tie my bows upside down. And I don't know why, it just, um, it seems like they lay the right way. Okay. Cute, cute, cute. It's gonna go right in there. All right, let me get rid of that. So this is our five by seven card. Oh, and you know what? I gotta finish with these gems, these in color gems that I love. And it took me so long to get them because they were on back order. All right, so I'm gonna do a big one. And again, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm putting these in the exact same spot that I already did. All right, so two down here, and then a small one right up here, right on the flower. Sometimes when you put the same color gem, like on the same color flower, it loses it. But these are so sparkly, they catch all the light, that, so that's not a problem. And then we've got the extra shimmer from the Wink of Stella, and then the shimmer vellum. Oi, this, I love it. So here's our five by seven 
four panel card. And again, this is a tuck spot on this one. Didn't do that on my first prototype, so faux pas. All right, now let's do one that's um, four and a quarter by five, okay? Yes, Cindy, definitely a wow card. Ooh, and it's quarter of nine. Yikes. All right, same principle, um, but now we can actually move a little faster um, because now you all know what I'm doing. So this one I'm using the counting sheep, the um, die, the stamps and the dies, and this is you know celebration item. So get both of those while you can. Get them while it's hot. All right. Um, so base. This one you can get both base pieces out of one eight and a half by eleven sheet. All right. So that's the only reason I had the cinnamon cider out was just to show you that. But I already cut these. And let me move this. So our base pieces this time. So here we had our five by seven. Over here, I'm gonna say four and a quarter by five and a half. Our cardstock pieces are, we need one that is, one piece that is eight and a quarter by five and a half. And we're gonna score it at that half inch because I like that and four um, then we need one piece that is six and a quarter by four and seven eighths and we're gonna score it at two and three quarters and again for everybody that got here late these are just the the base pieces for the cards I'll have everything um, along with the the panels, the layers, and all that. That'll be on my blog um, by Saturday. I don't want to say tomorrow because we're actually going to go to a um, Nate Bargetzi, a comedy thing, down at the Constitution Hall. So they're starting to reschedule all our events that got canceled last year. So I won't be home tomorrow night um, for that. Okay, so let's do our scoring. So our first piece, this was eight and a quarter. Oh, look at that. I didn't even cut that down right. I need to cut that. You know what? I'll trim it later. Assume this is eight and a quarter. We're going to score it at a half an inch because I like that half inch um, panel, you know, tab. And then I like to flip mine upside down and go at four inches. So our paper is going to fold like this. And then our second piece, this is six and a quarter. All right, that one's cut right, yay. By four and seven eighths. And I'm scoring this at two and three quarters. Okay. Now comes the other cutter. So to get that, um, the panel's the different height. All right, so I fold it over. This is our front. So I want to cut this, I'm turning it to the right, and again I'm going to go at three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to cut it down to the score line. And then cut this off carefully, like that. So that's our front. And then remember first I have to cut this back down to eight and a quarter. Man, I haven't used this cutter like this in a long time. I just use this for little, little things. Oh. All right, so same thing. I want to cut this piece off. So I'm turning it to the right and I'm going in at the three quarter inch mark. Yes, and the, um, go back from the beginning because there was a lot of um, good info and exciting. I love this card. And I think you're gonna like these measurements because you don't need 12 by 12 cardstock as the base. That was what prompted me to reconfigure, make these dimensions myself. All right, now again with my cutter, I'm just gonna flatten that out a little bit. Oh, here we go. So let's fold everything up. This one's gonna be a fun, bright card. All right, and 
fold this, Let's get our score marks. So this is how this is attaching to make our four panels. This tab right here, I'm going to put glue on it, and then this is going to sit right over top. Oh, and look at that. Something is not the same height. Oh, I hope this doesn't mess up the rest of my um, measurements. five nope four and seven eighths yeah I'm just gonna have to see because I don't know which part is wrong to tell you the truth all right put glue here and then I'm gonna attach these So I'm going to tap them together so those edges are all lined up. And that is driving me crazy. Oh, you know what? I wonder. Nope, five and a half. That was right. And minus three quarters. So this is four and three quarters. Hmm. Something's not right there. All right, but at this point, I'm gonna have to trim it because these panels are supposed to be the same height. So, oh Lord. All right, I might have a lot of trim in the dude <laughs> and for the other layer pieces. <laughs> All right. Oh, I don't even know if I can fit this all in here. You know what? I'm going to need my other cutter. It's just figures. Everything going fine until it wasn't. All right. Let me line this up with my cut line. And we'll get that little bit off of there. All right. And I don't like how that is like right up to the edge, but yeah, it's got to be that way. Okay, Cindy, I swear the first part of this was much better. <laughs> and Ethel, how are you? All right, so here's our base. And I can see this little, mm, still a little bit, teeny bit off. I think I'm just going to leave it. All right, again, we will work from the back. I've got all my stuff cut out. So I cut my... Um, my sheeps, my counting sheeps. And then I punched a bunch of balloons out because I don't know how I'm going to lay this out yet. I made my first prototype this size um, for my sister's birthday card, but I already gave it to her, so I don't have that to look at. And I did take pictures, but this one's going to end up being a little bit different. All right, so I've got all this stuff cut and punched. Let's start from the back. So we've got a piece of basic white that should be four by five and a quarter. Cause remember this card all folded up. This is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half, like our standard size for the medium envelopes. All right, let's glue this, just the edges. Now this one, I'm not going to um, focus on making so many pockets and belly bands and stuff. I'm going to do a pocket here, but I'm not going to do a belly band. All right, then this little strip, this is from the um, pattern party paper that's a hostess set. So this one, I'm just gluing this little strip on. This is uh, one inch by five and a quarter. And that's just to give it some color and interest on the side here. All right. Yeah, when I did my sister's, um, there's all kinds of colors in these papers. I did hers with flirty flamingo base and then um, pumpkin pie layers. And that really looked cute. All right, I need to get this a little bit of glue right in here. I didn't get that corner down. Oh, I thought I was doing so good. Okay second panel or third panel really so this piece all right is that gonna fit let me look at my let's 
sample again. I'm losing track. Oh yeah, so I want designer series paper and then again with the pocket. So this piece should be three and a quarter by four and five eighths. And now that I see that I messed that up, I am gonna have to double check all my measurements um, before I post them. I do wanna trim this a little bit. I don't like it because I don't know if you can tell, but it's gonna have a bigger border on the sides than it is on the top to bottom. So that bothers me. There must be order. So four and five eighths, that was right. And I'm gonna cut um, a 16th off. Let's see how that goes. Nope. Let's make this four and a half. Don't write down these layering measurements because um, really I need to go back and review them. That one quarter inch or whatever it was. Now I don't trust them, my measurements. All right, get that down. Same idea with the pocket. Um, hmm, interesting that that is all off too. So that should have been three and a quarter by one and three quarters. Oh, you know what? This is not three and a quarter. Ugh. You know, and I had this stuff cut like two days ago. I thought I was doing so good. That's what I get. Getting ahead of myself. All right. So here's our pocket. Mmm. I really like the orange and green together. All right, I, I'm again, I'm bringing back my one inch old timey circle punch that I will do just a little half circle for a pull tab. Now this size, this panel, this really is gonna be the perfect size to put in a gift card. And I can tell I didn't get that hole punched right in the middle, but we're all just going to have to live with it. Whoever I give it to is not going to notice. But yeah, it just seems off a little bit. Just enough to bother me. All right, skip it. Okay, this piece. Now again, I've tied in the same embossing folder. And um, hmm, look at that. Again, I have to trim that. Jeez, so this was supposed to be four and five eighths, but I think we're gonna have to go four and a half. Yeah, this would be really cool, um, even for like a Christmas present, because you can put all so many, you know, different things in it. All right, yeah, I like this quarter inch border. That's what I wanted to maintain through the whole thing was the quarter inch borders on each panel. All right, and then we've got our front and back. So this is gonna fold up like this. And I wanted, hmm, oh yeah, I wanted to put just a white piece here because I'm gonna put one of my little, um, my sheepies there, all right. Hmm, that looks off, but I'm gonna put it on anyway. I'm not even gonna tell you what the measurements are for this, these pieces, since I can't trust what I cut and what I wrote down. All right, and then our front is going to have this designer series paper with a very small border. And then again with the pumpkin pie. I like that there's so many colors in this paper. It's really fun. And it goes for boys or girls. So that's always good. All right. And I'm just taping this down. Okay. Now, there's our front. So we're gonna open like this. Mmm, I like it. Now I punched these bits out and I didn't know if I was really gonna use them, um, but I am. So this is the lovely label punch and this is just the granny apple green. 
and I'm going to put this like right in the middle. Oh, and you know what? I did not stamp happy birthday. Um, I may need to do that because I do want this definitely to be birthday. Um, you are amazing. So glad it's your birthday. Let's do so glad it's your birthday. And I'm going to do that in, hmm, so I've got pink balloons. This is polished pink, um, the granny apple green, the Bermuda Bay, and the pumpkin pie. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see. Let me put this on here. Maybe I'll come back to that. All right, so just layer this. And I want one of our sheep. Um, the one that is standing up that I, if I could grab it. All right. So I want this guy to hang out there. Oh, this is what I wanted to do was add a little bit of color. I was thinking I was going to ink blend, um, but I don't think I can control. I can't control that, but who cares? Let's just add a little color, um, to their like butt area. So let's do, um, mm -mm -mm. pink, pink, pink. I am going to do a little bit of, doesn't seem like I have a lot of pink in here in these pieces. Oh, here we go. Polish pink and blushing bride. So let me do a little blushing bride. Okay. Just a little bit, just to give them a little bit of color. And then I'm going to clean these brushes later. And then the other ones I wanted to do um, a lighter blue. I'm going to do Coastal Cabana. And probably Pumpkin Pie. And I'm okay with those not being um, sheep colors. I don't care about that. I just want it to be add a little color to match my color scheme. And just a little bit. All right, and then we said pumpkin pie for the other one. I am a big fan of non-traditional colors. All right, yeah, this is going to go good. Oh, that's a little darker than I expected, um, but that's okay. Again, just what I wanted, just a little bit of color. All right, so we're going to get... Mm, he's going to be here. I love it. Love it. Let's pop him up. And I do use the very edges of my dimensionals because why not? All right. Ooh, cute, cute, cute. All right. This is where I do need to make a decision on the happy birthday. Let's go with pumpkin pie. Yeah, you really like the striped and the green together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I tell you, that stripe um, reminds me of the Fruit Stripes gum <laughs> commercial from... I don't know who remembers that, but... That paper definitely reminds me of that. All right, so this, you notice I just stamped it on a scrap, and I'm just going to hand cut it. And again, don't worry that this is so dark. A, I re-inked my ink pads. It's got to be going on three months now. And I really was a little overzealous with the re-inking. Um, but this will lighten up, so don't worry. All right, so that, I'm just going to have this glue straight on here. Actually, we can put it at a jaunty angle. Why not? And then we'll add some um, flags and balloons. So these little balloons were die cut from the sheep die set and the flags. The bigger balloons were from a retired balloon punch that I still have. I still use it, so why not? All right, let's do, I thought I had a green, a little green balloon too. I kind of wanted that one. Of course I did because I can't find it. All right, this one's going to have to get, boo, I really wanted that green one. 
Is it right in front of my eyeballs and I just don't see it? Ugh. Or stuck under something? Nope. All right. Pink it is. Because I don't, I feel like there's so much orange and blue sticking out now anyway. I want this to go like right here. So I'm going to just glue this guy. But I am going to pop up um, some of these other ones. Here I can do an orange and a green. Oh, and I need my baker's twine back. Oh, so this is how I do the baker's twine on the back of the balloons. I take mini glue dots and this is where the leftover ones from paper pumpkin come in handy. But if you don't have them, you could just use your regular glue dots, but I pick this up boop, and I do two on the back. Get this peeled off. And then I just take my, I'm just going to take this all off, the whole ribbon. Take your baker's twine and just lay it right on there. And then chop it off. And I don't bother like tying a bow or anything like that. Um, but this one I am going to pop up. So let's pick these off. And it's okay that it's just hanging down right in front of the birthday. That's totally fine. All right, lots of orange. I get it. Inside. All right, we are almost there. So I wanted for this one, um, I want most of this to be for writing. All right, so let's put this guy here. And this guy here. And I'm just gluing them down. Now remember, I want to keep this all kind of flat on the inside just so that it'll shut somewhat nicely. And this one can be at a jaunty angle as well. Um, oh, I got an itch, sorry. And now it'll just be a matter of, let's give some, um, some flags. Actually, let me put this one here too. Again with the orange. I really wish I could find that green. All right. That's, that's good. I'm happy with that. Um, but this one, let's do some pink balloons. Pink, green, orange. I like them. Pink. And I'm just going to use a mix of the big ones and the little ones. Now my punch is kind of hairy, so I have to run it. Um, I have to run the my sanding block over it. That just happens with some of the punches when they get older. Um, I can punch it with tin foil. That helps. Um, it never seems to fix it entirely, though. Oh, you know what? Let's do this pink flag right here. They can be like, yay, it's your birthday. And I've got these other balloons. Boop. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the punches. Yeah, sometimes they just wear out. Tin foil and wax paper help. Um, yeah, Peggy, this card base is good. I love it. Like I said, like... It's got journaling qualities. It's got regular card qualities. We can do a lot with it. All right. And you know what? I'm just going to stick a couple more of these balloons on here. Um, Cause I just want you guys to get the idea of what we could do with this card. The one I made my sister turned out um, a lot cuter. I should say, but I also didn't have so many mess ups with the paper. It's always something though. I will say that. I don't think I've done any video like ever since I started last year where something 
um, didn't go awry, shall we say. That's just the beauty of it. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, I love the bright colors as well. All right, I am going to get every bit of these dimensionals used up. Oh, and you know what? Here I am just saying, oh, I wasn't going to pop these things up because I want it to shut. See how quickly I forget? Ugh. All right. Now here's something I will do on occasion. So these are, I will tie these together. So I'm going to take this ribbon or Baker's twine and I'm leaving it all long. Like I don't want to cut it off because I may cut a piece that's too small. Um, I just want to tie these in a knot. Oh wait, a knot. I need a double one. And you could do a bow too if you wanted, but I'm just going to do a knot. So it's kind of like the, uh, you know, when they tie them together, when they give them to you. And you could put a glue dot behind there if you wanted that to stay in place, but that is good enough for me sometimes. Okay. So we've got that, that here's where we would put like our gift card. Um, and then let's put some more of these little balloons. Now I am going to be mindful of when I shut this, I don't want to necessarily write anything up here, but I can put balloons. So let's do this. Let's get this pink one. And then these, I am going to just glue. I'm going to do that pink one and then this smaller blue one. And then I think I'm going to call it done. I need dement or glue dots for these. All right, glue dots. And again, I'm just going to stick the tail of this Baker's twine right on those glue dots and boop, whack that off and then add some glue. And I'm gonna put some right on top of each other. Now, what else could you do? You could add your Wink of Stella to all these balloons. You could take your white marker and, um, you know, sometimes you'll make like the side of it, like little marks here, so it looks like the light's hitting it. You could definitely do that. Let me get this stuff out of the way and put my pin back in my glue. Oh, here we go. All right, and then I'm gonna bring the other ones back in so you can see everything. Okay, so here's our, so glad it's your birthday sheet. Boop, boop, boop. And that sits up nice. And like I said, a gift card can go right in there. Yep. That'll hold. That's really the perfect size. Um, now, envelopes. Ooh, do I have an envelope handy? I don't think I do, um, but I will tell you this will not fit in a regular medium envelope because it is too thick. It gets too tight, um, so you will have to make one. And actually, I did make one. Let's see if this will fit. I think I made it four by six because I was having that paper. Um, I made the wrong size envelope for my sister's card. So then I had to remake it. All right, so this somehow ended up five and three quarters by four and three quarters. Hmm. All right, this is a tight squeeze as well. Maybe that's why I had to make a bigger one. Okay, this one is actually fitting. Hmm. And this I used the envelope punch board. Um, so, okay. I will keep this envelope for this card then. It is a tight squeeze. Um, it is also heavy. So if you were to mail this to somebody, you're definitely going to pay extra postage. All right, so that was the four and a quarter by five and a half size. 
This was the five by seven size that I made tonight. So Cindy, you will want to go back and watch this because this one is um, really awesome. We've got tuck spots here. We've got our pocket here. We've got a tuck spot here. We've got a belly band for another tuck spot here. So lots of possibilities. That is the pale papaya and black. And then this was my prototype where I used the polished pink and black. And by the way, these were the true love papers that are retired, but I had just a few pieces left. Um, so that's that for tonight. I only went over 15 minutes. I try to keep it to an hour. Um, what did I want to say? Bingo. I'm probably going to cancel bingo. If I don't get five people, I had said tonight was the <laughs> deadline. Um, cause I really want to mail bingo packets out by Monday. So I will let everybody think about this. Bingo's on October 10th. If I get five more people, we'll play. If not, I've got to cancel it because it's just, it's too much work. I need at least 10 people. Um, so please let me know by tomorrow. No, wait, let's say Saturday because that's still going to give me time to get packets ready. Yep. So Saturday, let me know. Um, and then there's our code for September, which is in the description. Um, and Saturday, oh yeah, World Card Making Day. So that is in not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, I don't have anything in stone, set in stone yet, but I think what I'm going to do is a couple of different lives throughout the day. Um, just a few small projects or cards or techniques or something, but either two or three times throughout the day on Saturday. So it's October 2nd is world card making day. Um, but I figure if you guys don't catch it, it's fine. Cause you'll be able to catch it later, you know, on YouTube or watch it here later. Um, so that's that and you guys have a good week and I will see you next week is going to be the last Thursday of the month. So that's when the workshop ends for September. Um, that's when celebration ends. So you only have a week left. So again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for spending time with me and I will see you next week. Bye.